lockdown. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and good evening, and welcome to the late one with Dr. David Burton and myself as we review and look at COVID-19 as to how things are happening in the UK. And then, of course, we're going to take a quick detour and, and pop in Jamaica as well. Now, we are actually going live also on Instagram. And yesterday, David should have come on to the show. And we made a plan and said we're going to do it. And, and then guess what? He was actually called in because he was on call. Now, the funny thing about that, I said to David, if you go on call, make sure they call you when we're doing the live. So it looks really funky and really looking authentic and looking dramatic, you know. As I said, when I got to go and I said, oh, my days, the doctor has got to go, you know. But it happened before. <laughs> So the same thing, Silbon, whenever you're on call, the, yeah. uh, the cardinal yeah. sin is to call out the Q word and say that it's quiet. Yeah. Because as soon as you say it's quiet, the poop hits the fan. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. yes. So that's so, that's exactly what you did. You called it out yesterday, so it happened. But anyway, I'm, I'm here today, mm -hmm. um, and we're here to talk about, obviously, um, issues surrounding COVID-19 and uh, its impacts and, um, on us so far. So today we had um, Dominic Robb talk to us a little bit about COVID and its impact on, on, on and, and plans going forward. So the, the tidbit that we got today was on the tracing uh, aspect. And I don't know if you remember, but a couple of weeks back, the government set a target of, uh, I think it was 18,000 target tracers to try and, to try and obviously yeah. track down people who've got yeah. symptoms of COVID yeah. and to, to, to get those people into sort of isolation and quarantine and to try and stop the spread. So we found that the government has hit a target of 21,000 um, persons to sort of help health aid and, aid and group people. Um, uh, and that will help obviously going forward. So that was, the, that was one of the big bits of information we got today because that's going to help going um forward in terms of trying to make sure that we are able to protect ourselves against the virus further further down the line so yeah. that was a really key and key bit of information today and it kind of slipped through but that's <clears> a key <throat> bit of information yeah david i want to stop you one second i'm just doing a little quality thing here uh mark anthony music on on uh instagram can you hear clearly just give me a thumbs up if you can hear clearly that would be appreciated or anyone on instagram and uh, let me see there, just want to make sure that this is okay. Uh, just give me a thumbs up or a wave. And those also on Facebook, if you can give me a thumbs up and a wave, if everything is okay, just here as we continue as well, just to make sure. Uh, I think what was happening a while ago as well, David, I, I think my speaker was turned up. That is why we're getting the feedback. Okay. But, but we've got to give God thanks because at least we can hear it twice. Because we are a person sometimes we're not privileged to hear. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. nice you have to hear it twice. Okay. Yes, yes. So yeah, you're saying now. So yeah, essentially that was the, the breakdown from, from Dominic Rob focusing on contact tracing um and and having the infrastructure to allow us to do that because that will allow us to do lots of things and obviously one of the things that the government wants to do is to reopen schools in the very near future um and if the infrastructure doesn't allow us to go forward then um it, we're not really acknowledging the concerns of of of, of teachers of of parents that really want to, to to potentially get their kids back to school and and i say contact tracing is one of those things that we we require as well as mm -hmm. the app as well you would have heard a lot about the app um, working up in the past couple of weeks um you know uh, it's been in testing in um, in a small community, and so that's another thing that we heard about today. That there's hope that we'll be able to get this app out there and, and working as well, um, mm. to, to sort of help us again to to sort of solidify our efforts in in controlling this this virus to a degree. Is that app app around um, the test track and trace? Test so that, trace that, that 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 track, that I'll just give you a bit of a flavour again. So the app was to really notify. Um, you of persons that you may well have come into contact with that have got COVID symptoms. Um, the time frame of which I'm not certain, but obviously in the time frame that we would be worried about um, you contacting 
and, and contracting the virus from them. So it was an, an alert that you could put on your phone to say once you've had the symptoms and you've tested positive, and then it would alert other people who've come into contact with you via Bluetooth within a yes. particular radius over a set period of time. Um, and that is currently being utilized as say in a small population um, uh, in the UK to try and help again, um, facilitate the, the, the use of it going in, in, in the future in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, it, it, so it, those are the two elements that, that really came out today. Yeah, it's it's interesting as to see how things are unfolding because, as I was speaking to some people, and I think I was sharing it to you, it's like persons are actually easing themselves out of the lockdown. They are. I think that things are changing uh, every every day, really, in that in that regard. I think people are. You see more traffic on the street, on the roads. I mean, the, obviously, there's the data that comes out of um, of the um, public health England, and you, you, we see that daily. But we are seeing more people in the streets, um, and that's that's happened because of the 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 information that's been given by government in terms of what sort of things and restrictions are in in place. So people are going to feel at liberty to to go out of their homes more and to interact a, a lot more. Obviously, the the message is being being alert, still um, respecting that sort of physical distancing of, of two meters, and you know indeed wearing the face mask when you're out um, in, in in places where there are other individuals. Um, because again, that's going to help to a degree in terms of reducing the, the spread of, 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 of disease. So I know I, I went to a local shop on the weekend, and you know, face the face the shopkeepers were wearing face masks um, in protection of themselves and protecting um, uh, the public at large. Really, the prime minister. When the prime minister the other day, and I'm having mixed feelings now as to. The, the vitriol or the critique of the prime minister when he said, stay alert, control the virus and stay safe or protect the NHS. You know? There are different views coming through now that the prime minister was actually saying, I'm not gonna use the word British common sense, but it's not trying to tell people what to do, but trying to say, if you can go back to work, go to work. If you can't work from home, stay safe, so therefore, it is like a little balancing act. You've got to also work with your employees because I know workplaces are actually now thinking of, can we bring in all those people now who are hot desking? Some people are saying, I don't want a hot desk. I want a desk for myself. Maybe that's their way of saying, I want to work from home. So don't <laughs> want to call me to come back into the office. Well, because we have seen where it has worked in certain yeah. ways yeah. where people who can work from home. So. Do you think the prime minister gave the wrong message or it is trying to s sensitize people to what is going to happen? So I think it's interesting I'll pick up on the point of the working from home. So for according to the government statistics, uh, I think at the same time of this year, um, so 44 people, 44 percent of people who are working from home successfully compared to 12 percent this time last year. Um, so it shows you that there's a flavor and an appetite. Um, potentially for people to be able to reorganize their work efforts and work from home if they're able to. But going back to your question about um, the the Prime Minister and whether that message was um, was clear, I guess. And I guess you know, the clarity is in the 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 um, the person that, taking in that message. And if you're hearing overwhelmingly that people are confused by the message, and that's a big if, if people are confused by the message, then there's got to be cl better uh, better ways of conveying that message and if all of this comes down to communication so um, yeah. if if the if the if the method of delivery of the communication is is good and people understand it then there's no there's no um, there's no question now the, the, the questions in the clarity now you can elaborate on things certain things and I think that you know going all the, that week or 10 days or however long it was ago now that, that Boris sat down and, and, and spoke to the nation it was quite a short speech if you think about it in, in the long in the longevity of time it was a very <coughs> short speech and so to convey a message in that short period of time yes. I think is quite tricky now we've had more time to sort of sit down divulge discuss um there are still things that we find confusing and I'm sure people will have seen the memes that are out there in regards to sort of the, the discussion about you know how, how effective or easy it is to go back to work and not go to work etc cetera, etc cetera. but yeah. in all seriousness I think that um the, the the discussion has been started and I think that therefore 
we've now had time for people to sit down if they work they can sit down and talk to their employers um, and say look what is the best way of me going back to work in order to sort of um, either leave home or work from home continually until we get an environment that works for, for, for us and then at the same time you're going to have health and safety aspects to the jobs that you're in to analyze and sit down and say well actually this is the best way working forward so even if the message was com was confusing um i think it started a dialogue um and i think that the, the, the next steps that have taken place and will transpire over the next couple of days weeks will help to sort of realign um sort of a working environment that works for both, both best for the employee and works best for the employer Mm. okay the safety matters uh, the most out of this as well you know yes, the, the, yes. the safety is the, is the key if, if 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 employees feel safe and 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 the employers are, are happy not happy but have to give rise to sort of the safety concerns that, that and concede to that then then yeah the way forward is great yeah there's another thing which also popped up today um ladies and gentlemen I want to welcome you again to the late one myself and dr david burton uh, mr burton is an ophthalmologist and um, we have been doing these different discussions over the week during the COVID to sort of um, bring it up to speed and also to give our perspective. One of the news that came out as well, I think over a couple of days or even today was anyone in the UK age five or over with symptoms can be tested for coronavirus. Um, wasn't that the normal case before? I think it's just making that, <laughs> talk about clarity, didn't we? I think it's just <laughs> making that point in case clear um now whenever you are requested to uh, or you you feel you have the symptoms and a good, good good thing to touch on this actually now and um, whenever you feel you've got the symptoms of covid and that those historic symptoms have been a persistent cough and high fever but today um we found out that um what added, added to that is the loss of loss of smell um mm. uh and and that's something that's been sort of discussed as a nuance for a, quite a while now um, and I think there were questions related to why that is um, just justified now, but I won't, I won't go into that. I mean, the main thing is that's another added feature in regards to, into, to reporting um, a symptom. So um, in, in terms of that, you really need to try and make sure that you, you, you get the test. So you can either dial 111. Uh, yeah. Call uh, one one one, or you can go to the government website directly. So if you go to gov.uk, you can you can register for testing on there, um, and it'll point you in the right di right direction. So yeah, whilst it may well have been the case, I think just making that making sure people are clear on the matter because you know you know what may well have happened is that people ringing up and saying, well, actually, is X is my son eligible at, at, at four and a half? Is he eligible at six and a half? And that feedback then gets pushed up the ladder and so the, the the clarification then comes from the top down to, to to the nation so there are certain things that have been in in, in offering for a while you know the, the tests have been opened up for a while now so it's as long as people know that they can uh, obtain a test that they can um, 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 get that get that test when required if they have symptoms and and uh, while we're at it so we don't forget um, Emmy Reynolds is actually saying call is a process to call 911 if you feel you have the symptoms or do you obtain a test? So I'm, that's, guessing, that's it's, I'm yeah. guessing it's 911 in the States, maybe. I don't know. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, 111. Uh, no, 111. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Emmy, Emmy, you said 111. What yeah, is 111? One, one, one. What is 111? Whoa, Silvan. So 111, that's the, that's the kind of step down service to 999. Oh, yes. uh, okay, yes. so um, essentially, if it's, a, it's a, if it's something that uh, doesn't require an ambulance, doesn't require a fire service, etc. Oh, those so, ambulance. Sim and, similar to 101. Similar to 101. With the so, yeah. So, listen, that's that's the thing. So, this is all regarding health um, at the end of the day. And if you want any health and advice, it's a 24 hour service. Now, in regards to um, the COVID test, you can call 111. Um, um, obviously, if you've got symptoms that will require you to, 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 to go to hospital for, you know, be shortness of breath and you're really struggling, then that's 999. But 111. And, um, and uh, essentially that, that they will point you in the right direction as to where you can get the test but uh, they'll probably they may well point you towards um the government.uk website mm. now the other big one is school school is a big one now because i think june the first is a day that the government is talking about people to go back to school or to get that in the process am i correct on that one yeah. that's right yeah yeah now that's right i i I, I, the unions are actually saying to the teachers, listen, we are behind you all the way because somehow if you don't want to go back to work, we're behind you. I, I believe also the medical fraternity, some aspects are now in support of teachers if they don't want to go back to school. 
that's quite, what's, that's what's quite right. Yeah, you're quite right. So yeah. the uh, British Medical Association has come out in support of the teachers union um, in regards to um, the, the the feeling that that schools at this moment in time are, are not a safe haven um, for, for kids and, and obviously for teachers. So um, there are questions that need to be uh, sort of answered um, in regards to um, those concerns. And um, that's that's basically what has been uh, sort of said at the moment from from the British Medical Association. That's obviously in direct um, contradiction to the government advisors, who are also um, doctors, but not only doctors, but also stati statisticians, um, uh, economical medical uh, uh, mathematicians, um, and they are able to have degrees of modelling as well incorporated into the. So it's a, it's a quite a complicated picture when um, we talk about doctors standing up for the, the, the teachers, when at the same time there are doctors who are um, working with the government. So it's a complex, complex picture. And it, it boils down to um, the degree of safety that I mentioned earlier um, and how you convey the message of safety and how you show that um, the, the safety aspect is something that is being recognized and being uh, adhered to and being achieved and if if those three things are marked down and you can show that then i think you have um uh, somewhat slight dif well, somewhat difficulty to, to sort of say okay well actually no this isn't something that we want to embark on in, in, the, in the idea of getting kids back to school and so that's the difficulty that the government faces the challenge that they face at the moment conveying that message um and i think over time, quite obviously, time will will show how things will sort of will pan out. At this moment in time, I, I, at this moment in time, though, I think that the local uh, authorities, local councils, will probably held probably hold the most weight. Um, mm. I, I see that schools within per, certain councils are sort of pulling out at the moment and sort of offering their advice as to when they feel that they, it will be safe to to reopen schools, and mm. that will. Obviously, depend on a lot of factors: the feeling for the teachers, the, the reported R numbers, because we know we remember we're looking at regional R numbers now. Um, and for those that remember, uh, that recall R numbers, the, the rate of infection that you can spread to other, other persons. We're trying to keep that under one. So, uh, certain there's geographic differences. We know that at the moment in time, and I think that's one of the reservation or one of the one of the points of reservation for for opening schools. But the other reservation is, as obviously, worry that kids can spread the infections amongst themselves and also spread it to teachers. And vice versa, um, and how how people orientate themselves to try and set up a safe environment. Yeah. So these are the complexities that that, that government faces. How those are just these head-on challenges that need to be faced. I think we look across the globe and see how uh, how effective other schools in other parts of the world have been able to face these challenges, and we learn from those challenges. <coughs> that's the that's the key for me in all of this. And what what seems to be happening as well is, um, you know, I think more European countries are relaxing lockdown restrictions on Monday with bars and restaurants opening in Italy. France and German propose a 500 billion euro plan to relaunch the economy, the EU economy. So you can see there's an economical thing going on, uh, a balancing act regarding the economy and the health factor because the UK, of course, do not want to be left behind, one would say. And of course, we're going into this other area now. So therefore, I believe Germany leading the way, and those other countries leading the way. New Zealand, they're, they're leaving out. Even Jamaica is talking about wanting to um, relaunch their tourism market on the 1st of June. You know? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, 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 David, I want to bring into this point here. So, so this point may be the underlying factor, like they call the underlying symptoms. We may have to learn to live with this virus for months, if not years, England Deputy Chief medical officer warns. Yeah, yeah. so that's a, that's a very good good end right there. And it's, it's, the, it's the great unknown, like where are we heading to and how, how are we gonna get there? And the where are we going is, is that we want obviously to achieve this, this vaccination that people are giving um, sort of their, their spin on when where we should achieve this target yeah. and quite obviously that's a really it's a, it's a it's a really tricky target because of the virus itself the virus itself is um has been historically quite tricky to pin down in terms of vaccination it's a it's a, it's a type of it's a type of virus that um changes quite 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 quickly try to 
behave mis- in, in, a, in, a, in a really terrible, tricky manner. And so to, to pin down a, a vaccine is proving difficult. And so we don't know when we'll be able to achieve that. Mm. Uh, and depending on which government advisor you speak to, they'll say months to, to, to years to, to, to live in many, many a time. So um, the, the thing that we, we, we need to do is to, to effectively build up a way of trying to navigate our lives mm. through this really difficult period, um, knowing that um, we need to try and effectively get some treatments uh, for, for this condition as well. Um, the vaccination isn't promised, but we will try to, obviously the, the medical community will try to um, but to build up this 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 co- co- cohesive cohesive effort to try and build together a program of of, of vaccination, but it's it's it's, a, it's proving difficult. So the best way we can go about our lives, but those of us who aren't directly involved in 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 vaccine in the in the vaccination program, is to try and find ways that we can navigate our lives say, efficiently and effectively. Um, and with low levels of, of people being infected, and that those who are infected will have the support from yeah. the, the, the NHS in this country, uh, specifically. Well, what, I, what I'm putting up now, I'm putting up this question which Emily Reynolds had posted up yesterday, and uh, because, because you were supposed to come on, so I'm posting this question which you put up. We need to be told more truth about this virus. Can the doctor tell us is this virus behavior is typical, the way it shuts down a wide range of organs. It also broad, you know, it breaks down the physiology. And Emil is there, yeah. Okay, okay. So um, in terms of the virus itself, the first thing to say would be, um, whilst I, again, pre- we preface this with everything. I'm not a virologist, okay? Yes. So I can't tell you about every single virus that's existed since time dot. But what I will say is, that this is a novel virus, but it's from a group of viruses that we know of. So it, it works in a particular manner that's akin to those viruses. So coronaviruses generally affect the chest, okay? And that causes respiratory distress and respiratory problems. So in that way, way shape or form, that's not, that's not anything that's new. In terms of having effects of um, affecting different organs, we know that um, quite obviously there are major organs, the uh, hearts, the lung, liver, um, brain, major organs. Uh, so if, if 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 any of those are affected, then it's 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 a, it's a problem. Okay. Now, obviously, the mere fact of from a physiological point of view, the mere fact that we re- we as humans rely on on air as a or specifically oxygen as a as a as a, as a source for for, for progression. Um, if your lungs are affected, then you're not going to get the oxygen to the other vital organs. And so that's where you talk about sort of multi-organ failure. This particular virus does have a predilection for the lungs, but it also has a predilection for other parts of the body. And I guess that's where the nuances come in, um, in terms of its, of its effect. So we know it affects the kidneys, we know it affects the lungs, as I say, um, I mean, it also has systemic effects that cause secondary problems. And what do I mean by that? Well, you may well have heard of sort of blood clots being associated with this particular virus, and blood clots yeah. can affect different parts of the body as well. So, whilst I can't speak on the fact that this particular virus is is no, is it is it normal for this virus to cause the effect that it's had? In some respects, yes, but in other respects, we don't know because this is a novel virus, as I say, um, yeah. and and as a respiratory virus, as a coronavirus. Um, as a family of the coronavirus, then this is working in in a way that we would expect to a degree or manner of fashion. But there are certain nuances because it is a novel type virus. Yeah, wow. So therefore, this this virus is like a little mafia then. I think that's the best way to put it. (laughs) Well, it's... Undercover mafia. (laughs) Yeah, well, it's it's doing things that we um, essentially do not want it to do. And it's we're learning every week about its effect, um, we're learning about, about um, best to treat it, how best to target um, certain, mm. um, how, how we target certain receptors in the body. So we're learning more about it and hopefully- it's, Okay, uh, I lost David briefly, but David will come back shortly um, yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're doing, we're on Instagram as well. So, so yeah, so I just- those, uh, Sort of um, nuances- Just wait for, for David to come back. To, Okay. 
ladies and gentlemen, I want to keep thanking you for coming on. And um, we're always waiting for David, to, Dr. David, to come back, Dr. Dr. Burton to come back. And uh, as we're just discussing um, the developments with regards to the COVID-19 in the UK and beyond. We're also on Instagram as well. So uh, those on Instagram, that is that is fantastic. So we're just waiting for things to click back in and to continue the process. How are you over there, David? It's not, it's not, it's not allowing me back in. <laughs> it's not allowing you back in? No, it's not. One second. Yeah, don't worry. Just give me two minutes. Don't worry. It, it, it will come back in in one minute. <laughs> <laughs> Getting there. You're getting there. Sorry. Let me see something here. So, so we, 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 we touched on the question that David, that um, Emil has uh, told more about the truth about this virus. Can the doctor? Um, yeah. Yeah. And uh, the feeling about the viability safety of an antivirus as well. But one of the interesting things that we're talking about is that. The UK is easing a lot down. Children are going back to school eventually. But of course, there is the, the concern that by virtue of such, we work magic. The doctor was on call, but he's back <laughs> on the track, Jack. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. No, that's cool. That's cool. I think my, my computer got COVID, I guess. I, 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 think, I think also what has been happening is that maybe I'm doing a little training because someone said, by when I have to, think on my feet when my guest is somewhat taken away it is preparing <laughs> me for the big time <laughs> so i'm going to go off the top. <laughs> that's exactly it i'm putting you on the spot so that was, plan, that, that was a plan that was right a plan that was a plan it was a plan all along so i forgot where we got to so sorry about that yeah i think i think what we're talking about is i, I had a huge point this is the underground mafia this is a mafia Oh um, yes, a mafia that virus. Was it. Yes, yes, yeah. It's behaving as such, I mean, its its operations are are pretty swift. Um, it is it, it it's working quite effectively in in trying to in trying to recreate itself um, and and take out and take out and unfortunately take out life. So um, it, it's it's quite targeted. It's obviously we know that. So looking at the data, we know that it's targeting people who are of a particular age, particular group. Um, and and it's 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 something that we again we we're learning from. We are really learning from this, and we will take the the challenge to this particular virus, and we will formulate sort of the 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 correct treatment, not correct but improved treatments. Mm. Um, there's there, there are trials going on at the moment, um, centering on to try and uh, seeing how we can improve our treatment strategy in this regard. Yeah. On on the world on the world stage now, we're we're seeing um, countries. I see. Tony Blair speaking about coronavirus and global leadership. Um, New York uh, Mayor, Governor Andrew Cuomo, he's publicly showed him taking his test mm -hmm. because if we go over to Jamaica now and, and what you may not have understood, there are a couple of things which has happened recently. There were people who are being quarantined or, or in um, isolation, what do you call it? Isolation? For isolation, years. yeah, yeah. I, I don't like the word quarantine. It, it works so many the, the different uh, reaction to me, but yeah, isolation I think is, is is key. Yeah, well, it's funny, funny. Tomorrow night I'm going to have Coach Chris Brown with an E, not Chris yeah. Brown, the dancer, yeah. and he's going to touch on things like the word isolation on lockdown and the psychological impact yeah. it has on people. So yeah. we're going to touch on the mental health factor, which is is area. That's a great discussion. That's going to be very interesting tomorrow yeah. night at, yeah. at uh, eight o'clock with Chris Brown, but. In Jamaica, um, people were, they were complaining. Those were by a principal uh, hotel in Saint Anne, whereby the food that they got was bad, shabby. The testing by some of the medical persons were, were you know, some of them bled after, you know. So they felt a bit um, really mistreated in a certain way. So they're really raising, and the prime minister apologized, as well as the minister of health. But Chris, but I'm uh, not Chris, um, but David. Hmm. What 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 has been the latest now is regarding one thousand Jamaicans who are on a ship, a boat, wanting to come back at the yard. Hmm. 
Mm, mm. And, and, and as a result of that, um, they're helping mad and there are different social media postings with their voicemail, voice notes. What, 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 is, what would you say from a medical perspective as to why governments, I mean, Brazil, I mean, we don't have to talk about Brazil because Brazil right now is not taking it serious, I understand, the Brazilian leader and their health system is, is on the collapse. Mm. But Jamaica, you understand, you heard Chris Tufton the other day, mm. you were on the show. What, what's your take? Why would Jamaica be so very um, cautious, overly cautious at this time? Sure. So I first have to commend the sort of Jamaican effort thus far. It's um, it's remarkable and fantastic. I mean, I was getting daily updates um, by way of my mother telling me how many people were being infected every day and yeah. watching this thing climb. And I'm thinking, well, actually, comparatively to this country, uh, it's not climbing at the rate, which is fantastic. And I think that, but the thing is that they took it seriously. That's the key. Mm. Um, Jamaica took this really seriously. Um, they locked down when they needed to. They made the the the, the right calls, uh, and uh, as such, the the numbers of of those people affected is is relatively low compared to I would say countries of the same size proportion, um, and, and relative to to countries like the UK. Yeah. Um, and that cautiousness is probably key in, in what's driving um, the re resistance to allowing, probably I'm saying here, without knowing the cases individually, but probably what's causing the the, the, the delay in allowing the sailors back uh, in, in into Jamaica. Um, and I, I, I can't speak on the, 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 the sailors themselves, the, the persons where, where they're from, where which countries they've come from, but quite obviously there is that worry that if they come back onto the shores, in a particular in a particular time frame then there is a likelihood if they're not within the sort of quarantine that or, or isolation that that there could be a, a, again a, another pocket of population or spike exactly in, in the population especially if they're not able to sort of confine that, that particular area and i think that's the, that's the key here the the person's making these decisions within public health uh, and the medical fraternity in jamaica are obviously making them for for for, for good reason um it, what they've what they've done thus far uh, is is proving to work um so you know i i wouldn't i wouldn't at this moment be out of time to to say look why is it that they're doing this in a in a in a, in a particularly egregious manner it, it, they, they they're, they're obviously thinking about this um uh, and, and trying to protect jamaicans at, at large um uh, and I do, I do have to commend the efforts, as I say, because it's, it's, it's no country is really. I mean, there are countries that that have leaded by example, leaded by example. Um, but for Jamaica to have done this in, in in the way that it has, I think is fantastic. That that that's good. That's good. Um, but of course, like fifty persons or some of them have now um, have a lawyer on the case mm. in order to challenge the Jamaica government because what they are saying is that. They are somewhat feeling like refugees. It's like they're begging to come to their home, mm. and I and I think one of the issues with this case, um, David, is the fact that some of them have said they have been isolation for months, mm. isolation for fourteen days. Um, so some of them just want to come out for the boat and just go to the yard. Yeah, you know? yeah. I can see. I can see where the government will come in by saying quarantine again, or you know, the fourteen days again. And then, you know, they can go to these hotels, these five-star hotels, which some of them are saying. What I'm uncomfortable with a lot is the fact that they seem like they got to negotiate to come back home. Mm, mm. <laughs> and yes. I think that is that is what is hurting yeah. people. Because and especially as you're a Jamaican citizen by, yes. by, by birth or whatever, it's, 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 a, it's a really tricky situation. And I think that um, early on in this particular um before we had the lockdown, we, there was cases of people being put in hotels. And if you remember yes. that, like it, sounds, it seems like an eternity ago now, but people being put in hotels um, in, in little places dotted around uh, England um, because of the concerns about um, the coronavirus. Um, and I guess that is a way forward, um, but without sort of looking into the case further, I wouldn't be able to really comment more on, on why it is that they've chosen to, to keep them on the boats, how long they've been on the boats for, what sort of support are they having on these on these ships. Um, I'm taking it all these ships didn't come in at the same time. Um, so there, there'll, there'll be delays in that regard. But um, there's, there, there, I would hope that there's method to, 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 the, to all of this and uh, what's predated this 
uh, in terms of the methodology of, of trying to restrict the virus within Jamaica itself has, has been good thus far. So um, we'd have to hear more about what the lawyers um, are able to prove or disprove um, mm -hmm. in regards to these, these, these persons. Um, so, but so, I completely get it. So therefore, what we're talking about, some are, some are listening to the science, mm -hmm. some are listening to the law, and some are listening to the people. But many times the people are feeling that they are not being taken um, in country. Uh, nobody's listening to them. I mm. got a lady contacted me the other day to say that, Sibra, what is happening? I have to call it because you're into politics. But why do I feel like decisions are being made around us, shutting us down, arresting us, and we are not consulted? Is it that the pandemic has somewhat taken control so much? that the, the opposition had to say, we have to get back to parliament. This is in the UK. I know they're doing it remotely. One more, one quick point here is it, and I need to check that out, because it may be a legal thing as a political thing. One is getting the impression that once something like a pandemic of this nature kicks in, all other things become secondary. Laws can be made for the sake of protecting the people. Yep. Protecting the government, yep. the nation, rather. Yep. Yep, that's that's essentially it um, in a nutshell. So, and and it, when do we draw real um, um, greenness from what happens in, in government? We we draw information, we draw ideas. Government leads when things happen, big things happen. So historically, that's really been wars in in my lifetime. Um, and I think for many people's lifetime, that's really boiled down to look uh, to, to, to wars. Um, but in regards to pandemics, in this country at least, it's never really been um, a, a, an issue. Um, but if you look at the kind of domino effect that has occurred across um, the world, it's not just the UK government that has drawn on the idea of, 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 of a lockdown. It's many a government across the world given the advice um, uh, from health officials um, and the WHO. So, you know, that's that's the that's the key to all of this. And I guess the questioning will always be there, but essentially there there is risk of life. And when you have risk of life, and actually not just risk of life, but actually people passing away, um, you have to really think about how best to, to sort of navigate that. Um and and I'm I'm very happy that I'm not a person that would make that particular decision. I'm, I'm blessed to be in the job that I am in, um, caring for patients, and I'm happy to have that challenge um, rather than that of deciding upon when um, countries lock down and when people take the foot off the gas uh, to, to sort of relax those those lockdown measures. Um, and as I think I think on the first time that we spoke, I, I drew reference to this. Uh, this fortunately um, has has is 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 resulted in less loss of life. That had been uh, had there been no no lockdown whatsoever, and I think we are learning a lot about how we will respond to the unfortunate um, feeling from my point of view that this will not be something that um, does not occur again. If that makes sense, I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is that this is this is something that will occur again at some point in our lifetimes, and how we respond to that will be dictated by how we responded to it this time around. Right. So, so, so th there will be the need for some level of inquiry and some sort of. Um, oh, most definitely. Oh, most definitely. definitely. There's got to be. We have to learn from this response. We have to learn from the effect that it's had on 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 persons. How the loss of of unfortunate life. Those people who have been admitted to hospital. Their pro their pattern and progression to to how they've um, ultimately been discharged from hospital. How they've recovered. Um, the impact on employers, employees, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, the economy. It, those certain things will will be will be will definitely drive how we respond in the future because whatever pandemic occurs in the future whether it's to a lesser or greater extent um we have to have the the things in place to to afford us the the a, a reduction in the impact on it has on everybody's life um and and whilst we may challenge the government where we may we we'll applaud the government um we have to come to a realization as to what things worked well and we always have a debrief on things you know mm -hmm. um, we, we have a debrief on, on on many elements of our lives uh, and the way that we conduct them you reflect 
um, on on certain instances regardless. So this is no different um, in, in in the reflection aspect. But what will be different is that it, it we it will it has a more of a global ap uh, effect, and every country will have to respond in a different manner. I don't think every country can respond in exactly the same manner. Um, some countries have been heavily affected. And some countries seem not to have been uh, affected as much um, in this particular um, a pandemic. Um, but this is still early. That's the other thing to mention, Mr. Albon. This is still early. We're still learning. Um, um, and hopefully, we are all through the worst of this globally. Um, uh, but you know, the thing is, we can't take our foot off the gas completely because we, we know that there's 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 propensity for 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 things to to change quite quickly um, and and um and ladies and gentlemen um i'm at the last segment now with dr david burton an ophthalmologist and thanks for those who are on instagram as well uh give me a thumbs up if you can hear very clearly for those on uh facebook thank you very much and those on youtube in the after life <laughs> after this is uploaded and thank you so much for coming on um I've got Alana Foster here, and let's go back to the Jamaica bit where she mentioned the government of Jamaica has not got the capacity to quarantine so many people at once, quarantine so many people at once. They are now making preparations to bring them to the island in due course. They don't want to spike as some of those ship workers may have the virus, so they have to be careful. I know it's not an ID situation, but they have to protect the rest of our citizens here in Jamaica and to prevent a spike. I think that's fair. But, and then very well uh, succinctly put there i think that's the thing it's it's about it's looking after the interests of those in jamaica for the for for, for the benefit of jamaicans at large mm. um and again without looking into the case and, and hearing it firsthand it, it, it sounds as though um that kind of um risk assessment has been made and that you know the impact on jamaicans would be greater than uh, than the consequences of facing any kind of court case going down the yeah. line. And yeah. um, and that's the key, making sure that not only Jamaicans in Jamaica are protected, but these, these ship guys on the ship are protected as well, um, making sure that they've got the requirements too. I mean, if there's any, and again, looking in, not looking into it, if there's anything that they need whilst they're off the coast, I think that then that could be provided by Jamaica if they're on the shores of Jamaica. And I think the Jamaicans on the ship, then that should be afforded. Um, but at the same time, bringing them onto the island um, without the, um, the, 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 the right sort of assessment of risk would be the wrong thing for them to do. So they've made that risk assessment and said, okay, look, let's, it sounds like they've said, let's just leave, leave them there for a little while. Uh, unfortunately, that's, that's just the way that things are, uh, are going to sort of manifest themselves for now. But over time, obviously, there'll be a working relationship to get them back um, and, and take it from there. But I completely understand the kind of, the feeling that they, that they may well have, that they're not being supported, that they're, 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 they're Jamaican citizens first and foremost, and they just want to be in their house back home. Um, but that will come in time, I hope. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Well, David, um, any, any last bit of to where you see we're going now? I mean, we're, oh, we're getting down to lockdown, easing the lockdown. Well, um, you know, I think this is gonna be a roller coaster of a ride. Um, that's just my feeling. There's no, there's no medic medicine practice behind that. I just think that, you know, they're going to have some days where they are values higher and that people worry. They're going to have some days where it's lower and then people relax a little bit more. Um, we're, we're wanting to sort of obviously um, open up uh, more and invite um, businesses to open uh, slowly but surely. Um, and I think, you know, where we'll we will will adjust to the message. I think that's the other thing. We'll adjust to the message. The being alert may well not have been the 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 message of choice. The, the way that it was communicated may well have not been to the to palate of many. But I do think that we'll we'll sort of appreciate and understand what that means for us individually um, mm -hmm. over time. Um, whether or right, whether that was right or wrong is is is, is another discussion. But so. So the first thing is being alert, making sure you're aware of your surroundings, making sure you wear face coverings um, when you're out. Uh, and in terms of where we're going, I, I think a slow, slow sort of release, um, yeah. one, uh, to a standard that we feel is safe for us to operate. And it's about getting used to that different method of operating in society um, for this new normal until we have more effective treatments, we have potentially a virus uh, killer in a, in, a, in, a, in a vaccine, um, uh, and and 
and we, we take it from there. But the time frame on on the on the latter of the vaccine is is up in the air, um, uh, and, and very difficult to answer that question. But more positivity is what I would say going forward. More positivity, more people trying to get back to doing the things that they would normally do, yes. um, and hopefully we can start uh, seeing more and more people soon i'm not saying that's the that's not the opinion of the government it's not my uh, my directive for people to go out there and start mingling my, my feeling yeah. is though that will come with time and and when we get to do that it's, it's going to be fantastic well but ladies and gentlemen um and david I want to thank you so much again for coming on and sharing your knowledge with us no problem. Um, as we go through this pandemic and as we get to grips with it uh, people are going to be starting to get on back with their life in some respect some people do not want to get back in their life in some respect <laughs> there's a new change and uh, and this this leads me to tomorrow night um where i've coach chris brown where he's going to be asking the questions one of the questions are you feeling mentally restricted by the word lockdown is there anything good that can come out of lockdown are you finding it hard to cope with self-isolation? Then tune in tomorrow night. I'm going to keep it brief. And uh, Coach Chris Brown is going to look at some of the mental health factors that you and I have talked about, um, David, some of the coping mechanisms. And he mentioned, I won't say he mentioned gardening is one, but he didn't mention cake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's because he's leaving the cake cooking to the experts, yeah? <laughs> oh, you mean oh, you? Yeah. You, no, 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 you, 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 you. <laughs> no, no, no. The cake I, is for me, but the cooking is for you. I mean, oh, I, yeah, 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 yeah. So, I, uh, yeah, I can cook a roti. I can, I can cook a roti. Yeah, I, cooking rotis nowadays. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I, I got a video from David, and and if people can donate to the to some fund or something like that, we'll show the cooking. <laughs> <laughs> it could be the next one, the cook shop. Yeah, yeah. David, listen, listen, thank you so much um, for coming on tonight. No problem. And, Always uh, a pleasure. Let me say bye to persons. and those on Instagram as well, I want to thank you so much, Corey Ad and those guys. Thank you so much for coming on, and uh, this will be safe as well. And uh, in, and Facebook, thank you for coming on, and Emil, Lyndon, um, Doreen, uh, and as as a song as a song by Bismarck, is everybody out there, everybody, thank you, thank you for coming on to the radio. You know. You're not, you're not a vapor, as it sounds like vapor. Sorry, I'm getting into my rap zone now. <laughs> That's the next show. <laughs> That's the next show. So see you guys tomorrow night at 8, 8 p.m. And on Friday night, for those who have hair and also want to deal with your hair in lockdown. Now, David, you have some. But for <laughs> me, I don't know why I'm doing that show because there's no hair on my head. <laughs> But she, but Salwin, Salwin Baxter is coming on the show on Friday night uh, at eight o'clock. She's gonna say, even Silver, well, trust me, they're creating hairs for persons like yourselves as well. <laughs> wow, I'm, I'm right. gonna keep tuned for that for sure. <laughs> yeah, so, so guys, thank you very much, David. Thank you so much. I'll just log off now and remember to like and share and tell everybody and all the best and have a good night. Thank you. <laughs>